everyone welcome back to explore electronics in this video let's get into chapter 2 of module 1 of the subject introduction to ai and applications that is machine intelligence so in this video i am covering defining the intelligence components of intelligence differences between human and machine intelligence and then agent and environment let's get in and understand these concepts so before understanding the machine intelligence we need to understand which are all the different aspects of human intelligence are how actually humans are going to understand the things what are going to happen around a human so here we have a definition given by howard gardner he is a american developmental psychologist who revolutionized our understanding of intelligence by identifying distinct categories which are representing unique cognitive abilities of an human possess so howard gardner give us the clear cut understanding by differentiating the intelligences human as the very first one is linguistic intelligence in the linguistic intelligence the ability to recognize and use phonology that means the phonics syntax and semantics by a language which can be used to speak and also write and also to speak and communicate to the other member or other human we can say so human will be having this linguistic intelligence that will come through a language then we have musical intelligence Musical intelligence is a capacity or a capability of a human to create, communicate, and understand sounds. Let's say audio, and it will be having a pitch and different rhythms. So musicians, singers, or composers of songs will be relied on this musical intelligence. They will be having high musical intelligence to catch the pitch and rhythm of a human being, and they will manipulate that. Then comes logical mathematical intelligence. this enables the understanding of complex things let's say complex and abstract ideas so mathematicians and scientists extensively apply this intelligence to solve the problems and they will come up with some theories so the next thing is spatial intelligence spatial intelligence in the sense what we are going to see in the external world by looking at it we will be perceive visual and spatial information and manipulate that into 3d images through translation transformation and rotation so this spatial intelligence will be used by readers astronauts and physicists in a greater manner so this spatial intelligence is very much required for them to analyze the data what they are going to see then bodily kinetic intelligence it means it will come through the body language or the body parts or by entire body movement we can say so here we will be having an ability to use our entire body our specific parts to solve some problems or manipulate the objects let's say athletes players and dancers extensively use this intelligence in their action that will be called as bodily kinetic intelligence then human beings will be having everyone will be having intrapersonal and interpersonal intelligence what is intrapersonal intelligence here means it is a capacity to distinguish between his own feeling and intentions and motivations so intrapersonal in the sense himself or herself so gautam buddha is one of the uh, best example he is a historical figure demonstrated exceptional intrapersonal awareness that is another intelligence then we will be having interpersonal intelligence as well so this is an ability to recognize and differentiate between the other people feelings other people beliefs and other people intelligence so this interpersonal intelligence will be used by mass communicators a uh, speech givers and interview takers so these are the different intelligence a human can possess and one will be excel in one of the intelligence where actually he will be working on that is all about the different types of intelligence the psychologist who had gardner given us then comes the next topic five core components of an intelligence those are the different types of intelligence he has given now to generalize this into five core components we have reasoning linguistic intelligence then learning and perception and problem solving these are the five components of an human intelligence or we can say machine intelligence even if machine want to get intelligence these are the five areas machine should work on so first one is reasoning what do you mean by reasoning this is a set of process used in making the decision or having some predictions through logical thinking here human or the machine has to utilize logical thinking to make some decisions and predictions that will be called as reasoning ability 
then come learning the ability to gain the knowledge by learning our skills through study practice are teaching by experience this is the second core component that is learning third one is problem solving means finding the desired solution by navigating through known or unknown obstacles this is problem solving this is the another core component of an intelligence then perception perception in the sense acquiring interpreting and selecting and organizing the sensory information from the environment a human will see the environment and listen to the music and listen to the audio listen to other speeches and all the sensory organs of the human will be collecting the information then through that perception he will be coming to some conclusions right that is what perception is then linguistic intelligence as i said this is an ability to use or comprehend or speak or write verbal or the written language effectively that is linguistic intelligence these are the five core components of an intelligence this is a very important topic as well to understand the machine intelligence next then there are two approaches for reasoning the very first core component is reasoning in that we will be having two types one is inductive reasoning another one is deductive reasoning inductive in the sense it will be utilizing a specific observation let's say we will be having some uh, specific uh, thing which we have seen and by looking at that we will be making some broad statement means by taking only one example we will be generalizing the statement that it will be applicable to everything that is called as inductive reasoning deductive reasoning in the sense it start with a general statement to obtain a specific or logical conclusion so you can see the difference over here inductive reasoning in the sense moves from a specific observation to a broader generalizations building patterns from individual cases means by taking an individual case we will be generalizing something that is inductive reasoning deductive reasoning in the sense it will start with a general pr principle we will be having some guidelines or rules then apply them to reach specific conclusion or ensuring the logical certainty when uh, premises are true if you look at the differences the very first difference is by looking at the or utilizing the specific observations making the broad general statements is inductive by having a general statement with us and obtaining the specific or logical conclusion is deductive so let's say an example manvi is a topper so manvi is studious because of manvi is a topper and she is studious we will be making a generalized statement that all toppers are studious right that is what inductive reasoning is and another example for a deductive reasoning is that students who all scored more than 80% or minimum 80% are eligible for placement so someone like manan has scored 90% therefore manan is an eligible candidate means this is the conclusion we are coming with a generalized idea that 80% is our criteria but here what happens in inductive reasoning by looking at a manvi she is a topper and she is studious we are coming to the conclusion that all toppers are like studious right this is the difference between inductive and uh, deductive reason here is an another point second point you can observe even if all the observations are true here there are still chances of conclusion can be a false it is like this but deductive reasoning is that if something is true for a particular class of things in general it will be true for all the members of the class so deductive reasoning gives more meaning in reasoning then comes the second core concept of intelligence so that is learning there are different types of learning here one is auditory learning here uh, by hearing and listening to someone such as students observing uh, recorded lectures and uh, grasping the concepts that is auditory learning they will learn from the hearing some some audio or listening to something then episodic learning it means learning by remembering the sequences of witnessed or experienced events in a linear or orderly fashion it means as we gain the experience we say we have seen many things like this we witnessed many things we have seen many people like you that is episodic learning there are many episodes we have seen like that and that is what the intelligence we got we learned something from that then motor learning learning through precise muscle movements like developing the skills to pick up and manipulate objects that is how the kids learn that is motor learning then observational learning by watching and imitating others by looking at some icons by looking at some popular people we will learn something right similarly children frequently learn by mimicking their parents behavior that is what observational learning then comes perceptual learning here recognizing and classifying the stimuli 
previously encountered means enabling and identification of an object or situations by uh, recalling the previous one what we have observed uh, and we will be coming to the decision that is what perceptual learning then relational learning relational learning in the sense differentiating the stimuli based on the relational rather than the absolute properties it means adjusting the future actions based on past outcomes so we will be comparing uh, the two and we will be identifying something that is what relational learning is then spatial learning by looking at some images colors and the maps and what we look at the things so through that we will be learning the things that creates a mental road map before physical navigation that is what spatial learning is then stimulus response learning performing specific behaviors when certain stimuli are received like reflexively reacting to touching a hard surface until we touch a hard surface we didn't come to know how actually it is then only we will be responding when we touch that hard surface again so that is stimulus to response learning these are the eight different types of uh, learning abilities a human and ai enabled system can possess then comes problem solving and perception problem solving is that it is a process of finding desired solutions so we will be having a problem and we will be finding some solution that is what problem solving is it is a challenging ability where we will be having some challenging situations by navigating paths blocked by a known or unknown obstacles some things are going to be blocked uh, which we know and some things are going to be unknown we will be struggling to overcome that right so these are the two things we will be having while solving the problem so it employs decision making techniques to select the best alternative for reaching the goals so even human and also a machine or ai enabled system will be going through these things while solving a problem then perception perception in the sense the process of acquiring the data interpreting through that and selecting and organizing the sensory information what we are going to see and what we are going to listen or what we are going to get from the sensory organs we will be coming to some conclusion or we will be learning something that is what perception is humans use sensory organs to do that uh, through the environmental changes or whatever we observe but ai systems will do that through then sensors we will be having different sensors in ai systems they will learn through the, those sensors it can be a microphone it can be a uh, data uh, reader whatever the sensory things we have in a ai system that will learn through the perception this is what problem solving and perception is then comes the difference between human intelligence and machine intelligence here there are three main aspects one is how the perception will be uh, taken by the system and human and how the information will be stored in human and system or a machine and how they will be handling the incomplete data let's say human perceives through pattern recognition means whenever we see some object we will recognize that through some patterns while machine analyze the data using predefined rules and algorithms to recognize them even to recognize a pen we will be having certain rules defined in a algorithm so that machine will go through that and understand whether it is a pen or not but human will see different kind of pattern of pens previously so through that he will come to the perception that it is a pen then information storage how humans will store the information human will store and recall the information through associative patterns where machines will employ searching algorithms and it will uh, get the data retrieval so that it will get the information what it is stored before then handling incomplete data so humans will be having innate intelligence to deduce missing or distorted information means humans or any living beings will be having that ability to get that missing information or distorted information by its own but machines will be struggling in that to achieve the comparable accuracy in such scenarios so humans behave correctly whenever he will be not having some data he will try to fetch it by its own intelligence but machines struggle in that region these are the three key differences human intelligence and machine intelligence has so now let's understand agents and their environment so in artificial intelligence ai is anything that can sense through its surroundings and take some actions or to reach some goal we can say so what is an agent basically agent can be a robot it can be a software program or even a self driving car we can say so it sees or feels what is happening around it through the sensors and decides what to do 
right so the change in situation will be called as these effectors and sensors are those giving the information to the agent and agent performing some actions that will be called as actions and from environment it will be learning something that will be called as percepts okay what is an environment here environment is nothing but it is everything around the agent that can sense and interact with that will be called as an environment let's say suppose if you take an chess playing ai the environment is the chess board and the opponent moves what he can do that is what environment is so ai agent is that it will have all these information it will learn from the environment and, to, and it will do some actions so rational agent in the sense it can perform best or it will produce the best possible result by utilizing the information it has from the environment so the overall idea is that these agents are anything capable of perceiving their environment through sensors and acting upon it through effectors and always striving for the best possible outcome given in the available information this is what ai agents are then we need to understand the three types of intelligent agents so one is obviously human agent suppose if you have a human agent human will be having some sensory organs like eyes ears nose tongue and skin acting as sensors hands legs and mouth serves as an effectors right to add to do, to do some physical action then we will be having robotic agents robotic agents in the sense it utilizes cameras as an input device and infrared range finders uh, it has and, and it has some sophisticated sensors while various motors and actuators will be effectors over there they will be performing some movement and they will be rotating something that will be the output device it has then we will be having software agent as well software agent in the sense it operates in a digital environment where it will be using some encoded bit streams what we are going to provide or what it receives and through the programs and also it will give some output as actions so processing the information purely through these computational uh, programs or pro computational things what a software agent can do so these ai systems employ these different types of agents with the sophisticated sensors and it will provide some actions which will be called as effectors to operate with an environment to do some specific task this is all about the three different types of intelligent agents so this is all about this video in the next video let's understand different search methods and algorithms what we have and then let's move on to knowledge representation in the subsequent videos thank you